This is the 15th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. Having created a number of network shares, and now having tested the permissions to those shares, we're ready to review and amend the settings that managed the electrical power and physical hardware of our NAS. If we log back into the Disk Station Manager, And then from the DSM's desktop, we select Control Panel. In order to view the hardware and power settings for our NAS, we need to first enable Advanced Mode. In the top right hand corner of the Control Panel, you can see a link called Advanced Mode. If we select Advanced Mode, we're presented with an expanded set of options. From within the grouping called System, let's select Hardware and Power. You can see that within the Hardware and Power panel, we have four tabs. General, Power Schedule, Hibernation, and UPS. Under the General tab, the first set of options refer to Power Recovery. The first option in this set, Restart Automatically After a Power Failure, will, in the event of a power failure, once the power has been restored, make the NAS automatically restart, as other services within the hardware and power settings need this option to be enabled, we're going to enable this feature now. Enable WOL on LAN allows our NAS to be turned on remotely through our local area network. WOL simply stands for Wake Up on LAN and is a network standard that allows our NAS to be turned on via something called a magic packet. In order for WOL to work, you can see that this feature requires that Restart Automatically After a Power Failure is enabled. As we are setting up our NAS for a home environment, we have decided not to enable this function. Next, we have Beep Control. This will sound an alert if our NAS finds itself in any of the following situations. A cooling fan malfunctions. If a hard drive starts to fail or crashes when the NAS is powered on, or when the NAS is powered down after pressing the power button. You can see that if one of the alerts should go off, we are shown which alarm has been sounded. We also have a button which will disable the alarm. Fan Speed Mode, as the name suggests, allows us to control the internal cooling of our NAS. You can see that we have three options, Full Speed Mode, Cool Mode, and Quiet Mode. By default, our NAS has been set to Quiet Mode, which makes the internal cooling fan of our NAS spin more slowly to reduce its noise. But this is at the expense of our NAS running warmer. As a general rule of thumb, if a computer runs cooler, it will tend to be more reliable over time. However, as our NAS is placed in a well-ventilated location, and it is also part of a home network, we need our NAS to be as quiet as possible. So it is for this reason that we have left our NAS on its default setting. Let's select Apply to save the setting changes that we have made so far. In a home environment, there are periods of time when the NAS will not be utilised. This means that over a 24 hour period, we are wasting energy by having our NAS running. Power Scheduling is an option that allows us to set when our NAS automatically shuts down or starts up. This in turn can help us to reduce the total amount of energy that our NAS uses over a 24 hour period. You can see that there are five buttons in Power Schedule. Create, Edit, Delete, Summary and Save. When we select Create, we are presented with the Add Schedule window. First, we need to choose either Start Up or Shut Down. Let's select Shut Down. You can see that we're now presented with a warning message stating that if another scheduled task is running at the time that the system is being shut down, the system will not be able to shut down. 
In the date field, we have a drop down menu which offers time periods that we can use. Let's keep the power schedule simple by using daily. Next, we need to set the time when the NAS will shut down. In this example, no one will be using the NAS in the early hours of the morning, so we will set our NAS to be shut down at 1am. By selecting OK, we set our first schedule. Let's now create a second schedule that will turn the NAS on just before everyone in our house wakes up. This will be 5.30am. If we select Summary, we can review our schedule. In order to edit a schedule, if we first highlight a schedule and then select Edit, we are once again presented with the details for that schedule. Let's change the time to 6am and then select OK. If we once again select Summary, we can review the changes that we have made to our schedule. In order to delete a schedule, we first need to highlight the schedule and then select Delete to remove it from our NAS. When we select Save, we save the schedules to our NAS. With our schedule now set, at the designated time, our NAS will automatically shut itself down. First, the blue indicator light on the power button will start to flash, along with the indicator lights for any hard drives that have been installed. When the NAS is completely powered down, the status, disk and power indicator lights will all go out. When it comes time for the NAS to automatically power itself back up, both the power and the disk indicator lights will start to flash. Only when the power indicator light becomes a solid blue and the status light is once again a solid green will the NAS be completely up and running. The hibernation tab will provide settings that will allow us to specify when, if left idle, the hard drive on our NAS will power down. This option will help to reduce the total power consumption of our NAS while also reducing the wear and tear on our hard drives. The first option allows us to set when the internal hard drives enter hibernation mode. The default is 20 minutes, which as it seems like a reasonable amount of time, we will leave set on this limit. Start system hibernation 60 seconds after hard drive enters hibernation. When enabled will activate ignore broadcast packets from Windows Explorer. Both options relate to having our NAS automatically enter hibernation mode one minute after the internal hard drives have already entered their hibernation mode. If we were to enable these functions, we would be able to further reduce the power consumption of our NAS, as these options will cut off the power to the hard drives, stop CPU activity, stop all internal fans, and turn off the LEDs to the LAN ports. However, by enabling system hibernation, the NAS will have to power back up if called upon by a user. This in turn will make it appear as if the NAS is either not responding, is slow, or has been misconfigured. So it is for this reason that we have decided not to enable system hibernation. As a Synology NAS can also use external storage, we also have an option to allow external USB hard drives to enter hibernation mode. While we don't currently have an external USB hard drive connected to our NAS, it does not do any harm to set the time to 20 minutes. It should be noted that your Synology NAS may not be able to place all external hard drives into hibernation mode. If you suspect or are experiencing an issue with hibernation, a useful diagnostic tool is to enable the hibernation logs. By reviewing the hibernation logs, you have a way of finding out what might be causing your issue. As we will be looking at how to review the logs of your Synology NAS in a future quick tip video, for now we're simply going to disable this feature. Let's select Apply. So to recap, in this video we reviewed and adjusted the power and hardware settings for our NAS. 
This included automatically rebooting our NAS after a power cut, enabling wake up on LAN, beep control, fan cooling speeds, power scheduling, and the hibernation of the hard drives used by our NAS. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how we set up and configure a UPS for our Synology NAS.